Hey team, how's it going? I'm here at the Auckland Domain and I'm covering the Lantern Festival over the next four days. So I thought this would be a good time to give you some tips on how to shoot live events by yourself. Tip number one would be to go wide and stay wide. If you're covering a stage or a performance by yourself, it's absolutely fundamental that you get the wide shots with everything in frame, so you've always got something to cut to. Too many times you'll be focused on getting really cool movements or really cool detail shots, only to get into the editing bay to realize you've got nothing to cut to. So absolutely, the first thing you need to do is go as wide as your lens will, cover, uh, will let you and just get everything in frame you can. You can always crop in and recompose later with 4K if you're shooting that, if you need more options for your length. My second tip is to get the detail shots. Once you've got all your wide footage covered, make sure you get close-ups of the action. For example, if you're shooting dancers, get close-ups of their feet moving. If you're shooting musicians, get close-up of their hands and the instruments they're playing. And then no matter what, always get close-ups of the face. This is going to give you a subject that you can relate to, as well as keep the distance and the length of your shots uh, changing. So it's not just all wide, 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 or close, close, close. That keeps your video more interesting to watch and less boring, less predictable for the audience. The third tip would be to make sure you get crowd shots. Now your audience don't just want to see people walking, so the important thing here to focus on is interaction. Get them interacting with whatever the event is. So if you're shooting a music performance, get the crowd dancing. If you're shooting a cultural festival, get the audience interacting, buying food or interacting with the activities that they have around. We don't just want to see people sitting and watching stuff, we want to see people doing stuff. My fourth tip would be to get the reaction shots. You've already got the action shots and the close-up and detail shots you got of the performers, now get some reactions to it. If he's humorous or does something funny, get the crowd laughing. If he does something amazing or finishes performances, get the crowd clapping. Show the audience how they're meant to respond by showing them an audience responded. My fifth tip would be to make sure you get clear opening and closing shots. This could be the line outside a club, this could be a wide shot slowly dollying in on your location, this could be a close up of the name of the place that you're covering or the event that you're covering. That's an easy way to say, hey, this is the beginning. And then at the same time, get an easy ending. If you're covering performers and normally thank the crowd or bow or make some sort of closing, that's an easy note to end on and it's gonna wrap up your video quite nicely. And here's a quick bonus tip. If you're not being paid to shoot the video and you don't necessarily have media permission, email the organizers, let them know what you're doing and ask for a media pass. Most events are pretty happy to give these out pretty nonchalantly. You don't often get rejected, especially if you've got a bit of an audience or some sort of work that you can say, hey look, I'm a part of this organization or I'm making a short film or I'm a traveling filmmaker. People are pretty friendly to accredit you and that way no one will think any dodgy things of you running around this event with your camera. All right team, that's all I got. Remember to like the video if you found this helpful and leave some comments below. I always look forward to your feedback and remember I'm making videos every week now so remember to subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.